He's here, boys and girls. He's here. Bob Pollock from the Extension Service brought to us by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. He is back from the State Farm Show. If you're asking for January weather for a trip to the State Farm Show, boy, did we get <laughs> boy, it this week, huh? We got it. We got it, didn't we? Yeah. Although there was Wednesday, a day. Wednesday was there were squalls here and there on the way, I guess. Yeah, there was a day. There was yeah. a day. But still, this is January after all. Normally, right. it's the whole entire week. With yeah. So you had a good time? Yes. You learned things? People oh, learned things? I hope so. Yeah. That's pretty much the purpose of there it. There you go. Well. <laughs> Other than to <laughs> enjoy some, uh, a lot of food and yeah. a lot of activity and mingling with a lot of people. A lot of deep fried food, as a matter of fact. Yeah, there is some of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there really is. Okay, so here we are. It's January. We've not had any winter at all. And here we come to the weekend with temperatures in the 60s. Are our trees and plants and lawns, are they really confused right now? Well, they could be. Yeah. Yeah, they could be. What are the ramifications I, of when it's so it, warm for so long in the month yeah. of January? And I don't, it's not so much if it stays warm, mm-hmm. not a big deal. Although we do need temperatures in, in the higher 30s and 40s. Control some insects? For, well, not so much control but more so on plants that need a dormancy period in order to set them up so that they do things next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so some, some plants need that. So seeds, um, if you're propagating some seeds from either like oaks or, you know, nut trees uh-huh. uh, or um, even fruit trees mm-hmm. need a period of temperatures in that range for a certain number of days mm-hmm. in order to prompt them to then yeah. either grow, you know, come out of that, um, break that seed dormancy and mm-hmm. start to grow as a seedling, uh, or to uh, start and leaf out in, in the spring. But if, so our if they trees, don't get those yeah. conditions, then that messes the whole cycle up. But, but just staying, staying warm... Or just staying cold is not so bad. Uh-huh. It's when we get these wild fluctuations. The so, yeah. yeah. So it didn't. So, I don't think it got as cold the other night as they were originally predicting mm-hmm. um, in most places. But to swing from ten degrees at night and then go to fifty or sixty the next day, we've got a, we had a couple days yeah. in here to kind of slowly creep out of that and get into warmer temperatures. It's it's when we really go. In a short period of time, you know, 12 to 24 hours, one way or the other, uh, that really can throw things out of whack. I'm guessing it impacts uh, wildlife that which would hibernate uh, as well. Bears ought to be sleeping right now, but they're not. Yeah. Um, yeah, they might be thinking, oh, I can this is go great. roam around a little bit. This is great, but I'm a little heavy. Um, yeah, so, and, and trees, they do hibernate uh, in a way and expect to wake up at a certain time. So if they get all this warm weather for a week or two at a time uh, and they start to bud a little bit and then a freeze cycle comes along are they going to recover from that they, they, we probably haven't had enough of that yet mm-hmm. to to promote them to do that or prompt them to do that mm-hmm. but you get into february and that starts happening then yes they could start to if the buds start to swell then we're most likely going to get a cold snap again between February and April, or even May, yeah. um, and that can cause damage. Then uh-huh. definitely, because once they start to, um, once the buds start to swell, and once that activity starts to uh, function in there towards coming out and leafing out or flowering, um, then those buds become less hardy mm-hmm. and more susceptible to any of those fluctuations in in temperature and moisture. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Uh, We certainly don't want them to get too busy. No, we don't. Don't get too busy this time of the year. And we don't need things budding right now. Uh, And that's one of the things that uh, people are wondering about now is uh, what are the ramifications of having weather this warm into the month of January? And then what does it mean? In terms of precipitation, we're still getting rain. Right. um, And and that's good. That's good. Uh, but I, I know that there are lots of folks that would like that rain to freeze a little bit in the ground and, and make our ground really hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there, 
there's reasons to that you need may, may need to get out on to the ground. Uh, so when it's good and firm and solid, then it makes it a lot easier to do that. And mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, tree pruning that's done during the winter months. So if the ground's firmed up, then it's a lot easier to get equipment in uh, to do that. And easier if, if the ground's soft, then we can make ruts very easily, which you are very well aware of the word rut. <laughs> You constantly live with that, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sitting in my mailbox the other day, just pulling into the mailbox, getting the mail at the end of the workday. Uh, and uh, here comes the truck the other way. Uh, so I'm on the left side of the road getting my mail. He sees me there, and he decides, I'm just going to squeeze by him there. I can't wait the six seconds it's going to take him to back up and pull into his driveway. I'm just going to squeeze by on the left which means I'm going to drive through his lawn, which is exactly what he did. After I had spent all that time repairing that particular patch, he come barreling through with his truck. Drives you nuts. Nuts. I I just keep seeing a fence in your future. You do? I keep keep seeing large boulders. (laughs) That will work just as a fence. Yeah. Boulders can be, have been (laughs) used for... Long, long time as fences. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So those yeah. are some of the things we look at. What are some of the other issues when you have a warm winter that, uh, that you as at the extension look to? People give you their concerns about this or that? Um, yeah, and, and it's more so. So you can get into things where you're overwintering plants or where, uh, you know, and it gets too warm. And if they're in a protected structure, that protected structure is unheated. Mm-hmm. But you, if the temperatures are too warm to begin with and then you get a little sunshine on top of that that can really heat that up yeah in that overwintering structure which is usually just a modified greenhouse yeah um and it and usually they'll have more of a white plastic on there which is meant to uh, provide some shade Mm -hmm. um and also reflect some of that sunlight but still that can warm up in there and so then all those plants that are in there and in containers in most cases uh, then those can be stressed as a result of that mm-hmm. or forced um, to start to grow, and you don't want that yeah. in the middle of January. Yeah. So, yeah, just kind of practical things like that that we kind of want to put things to bed for the winter, but mm-hmm. with with changing weather patterns, that we have to rethink that maybe. What else can we do? How can we do it? What do we need to be thinking about and looking for? Mm-hmm. Um, can't just walk away and leave it you've talked recently about uh, not just recently but uh, in the past about um, uh, humidity when you have indoor plants or plants that have been brought indoor for this season how important it is to have air that's humid enough so they can draw the moisture out of the air Um, is movement of air as big an issue as humidity might be yeah yeah you like to have a little bit of air movement too Mm -hmm. i mean the air can get stagnant if it's not moving around so you can get hot spots or you can get cold spots. or So just having that circulating mm-hmm. also helps mix the cold air with the warm air. Because even in, a, even in this studio, if you'd put thermometers up at the ceiling and down at the floor and well, in the corners. Me, I know that. Yeah. Uh, or out in the hall. And, you know, we'd find variation in the temperature. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we did the same thing with the humidity, we'd probably find a little bit of that. Um, but, yes, that would... That does affect things. Generally, you have said in the past that when a plant is outdoors, the movement of the air helps to strengthen the plant stock, too. Yeah. Uh, Same thing indoors? Same thing indoors. Yeah. You know, it's the same plant, um, but having that, and and we've talked about that in reference to seedlings, Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you're growing them in a greenhouse or growing them um, in your basement under lights or wherever. Little resistance. um, Yes, having that. That resistance, just a little air move in there from a, even a small fan, uh, helps them wave in the wind and strengthens the stems of those plants uh, versus them being more succulent and weak. Yeah. Um, it's like isometrics for your sprouts. Yes. Well, and yeah, and you can control that height too. So if you're growing plants indoors now, uh, keeping that, especially if you're using uh, fluorescent lights, mm-hmm. keeping that light source close to those uh, seedlings that you're germinating will also help keep them shorter and keep them from stretching Mm -hmm. because they'll even become more, you know, susceptible, weaker um, stems and more able to bend over, you know, if they stretch. Um, So keeping that light close will help control that 
and then a little bit of air movement uh, will add to that and strengthen the stems as well. I only have a minute left. I wanted to ask you this, because, we're, and it goes back to the topic of a warm winter. Yep. Bee colony. Mm. We've been talking about bee colony and strengthening it and uh, keeping it strong. Does this help or hurt? Or neither? Yeah. I, I, to my yeah, mind, this, it can't help. Yeah, well, yeah, because we probably know that we're, we're going to get these extremes. It's going to warm up and then it's going to cool down, um, and we may see bigger fluctuations in that. And so, naturally, when things are warmer, they lose their their hardiness or their ability to adapt to that. Mm-hmm. So, so when it when it slowly gets cold in the fall, and of course that gets timed along with the day length too being shorter. Yeah. Um, then we we they gain that that hardiness mm-hmm. um, when we get into periods like this that kind of that affects that they lose that hardiness because yeah. you're in those warmer temperatures and so when you do get that spike down then they're not ready for that yet yeah. um, so the the water in the cells in plants for instance kind of has an antifreeze in it um, and and when we get in these warmer conditions it loses that and and it can't just gain that quickly in a couple of hours. It takes mm-hmm. days for that to yeah. change and build up. And, it's like, and I, like I told you, we had wasps in the church on Christmas Eve service. That's never a good thing. <laughs> He's Bob Pauly. Thanks so much. You're welcome. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. 